Hi everyone, welcome back to Busta Rhyme. This is Tuplex. Uh, I've been spending a little time just digging around and trying to figure out how I'm going to get around the subsurface ocean to get into space. And uh, I was trying to figure out a way that I could tunnel up through the salt water and I can't think of any <laughs> possible way to do it. Um, I've been able to tunnel down through water before. You know, you can build three tiles, let's say. Uh, or no, you would start with two tiles. And then a tile there. Sorry. <laughs> Let me try to... Or you could do like two tiles like that, right? First this one and then this one. And then you dig those, and then you put those in, and then you can remove that one, and then you can come in diagonally and build more, right? So there's ways that you can go down, but going up, I think, is a different story. I don't think it'll work, right? So let's say I'm trying to break through here. At some point, I'm gonna have, I would have to break it and water's gonna come out, like when I break this tile, let's say. And then in order to go up, I would have to build those two, but I can't get to those unless I break out these. Right, so I, I don't think there's a way to go up through water tunneling without having all the water come down on your head. So I cleared out this biome, this had a bunch of, this was like, a, like the starting biome, it had a bunch of algae and copper and useful stuff in it. So I'm thinking I might just uh, seal up the sides of this and then I can come across here. I can uh, I can cut through here and allow this water to drain into there. Uh, this water can then drain into this cavity. So maybe maybe I can just do that. Start by allowing it to, to drain out. Um, and kind of work my way around it like that. I don't know, although I don't know if that's how much that's really going to help me. Let's see, what's that? That looks like more salt water up there. So there appears to be a whole bunch of this stuff. I still can't see space, but I'll keep working at it. Um, it's, it's not real urgent right now. I think we have more important things to do. Uh, let's see what we got here. I don't want any of that, thanks. Already got Drekos and Drecklets, and I don't want any more dupes right now. I think I'm doing fine. Okay, so um, I figured out what was causing the pipes to freeze on the water sieve. Um, the issue was that the sand that got placed into the water sieve was minus 14 C. And uh, I believe that that's what was causing the water to freeze as it was coming out of the sieve. So I deconstructed the sieve. I built another one. Um, I set up a little thing here um, where I can drop off sand. Uh, it's now above freezing. All right, I dropped off a bunch of sand in here. That's 17 tons. Uh, I just put it into this little pool. I have my cooling loop going through that little pool. Um, which in this case is actually heating it rather than cooling it. So this will actually aid in in the cooling of my <laughs> uh, of my cooling liquid. Um, oh, son of a gun! I changed that to insulated pipe, but not that. That's really quite a blunder, isn't it? So now water is coming in at 16 degrees. Well, I guess it's not it's not picking up too much temperature on this little run, but um, this should have been insulated as well. I missed it, but I I I'm not I don't want to break this open to correct it because then all the steam is going to come out and condense, and this entire area will become a big wet mess. So. I'll just leave it for now. I don't think it's going to cause any major problems for me. Um, 
And then there was a comment that uh, someone kindly pointed out that... Let's see, petroleum generator makes 500 grams a second of CO2. The natural gas generator, 22 and a half grams per second. That's actually not very much. So it's really the petroleum generator that's making a lot of CO2, 500 a second. Um, but my skimmer will only take out... Uh, how much? 300 a second. So this skimmer will not be able to keep up with that petroleum generator. So I'm going to have to make another carbon skimmer. So I'll put that one over here just because it's, you know, just because that's where it is. Um, I wonder if there's a way that I can get this to use the same, the same loop here. It's too bad I didn't leave myself more room over here. Maybe I can... No, I don't want to dig out... I mean, I could dig out some area here, I guess. I hate releasing chlorine into the base because then it just floats around and never gets used up. Um, or I could... I could get rid of this. Put the skimmer right here next to the sieve. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can get it to fit over here. I'm just trying to think how I can plumb this in to the sieve. Uh, okay, the output I could manage to get in. And it looks like... Maybe I can just do this. I think that'll work. Okay, and... For power, I'll just draw off of this power line. What's my potential on there? Okay, potential load on this one is kind of at its limit, I would say. But there's, most of the devices on it are not going to run all the time. Uh, so we can do that. And then for the automation, I can hook this up to exactly the same automation wire uh, coming off of the AND gate so that they both come on the same time, according to those two sensors. Okay, so I think that'll work. So this has been running for a little while, and as you can see, the CO2 levels come down quite a bit in this bottom part of the base. It's uh, below 1,500 now. And I have this set to 1,000, so it'll, it'll gradually work its way and eat through all that CO2. Okay, and then uh, our steel production has stopped, and as always, the reason is because we don't have enough lime, which is always, <laughs> seems like it's always the issue. Well, let's see if this is actually working. Okay, yeah, it looks like it's doing okay. This is probably not the optimal plumbing, but as long as the machines work, that's the important thing. Okay, um... Yeah, so to get more lime, I'm going to need to dig up more fossil, which means I'm going to need to dig up more of the biome down here. Um, we've got molten slicksters and slicksters, which I would like to try to make use of. Um, I'm afraid that once I start digging out more, that they're all going to drown and be lost. Um, but at the same time, I do not have enough temperature for them to survive in my industrial area. So, um, I think I may have to forego the use of slicksters in this playthrough and maybe um, 
maybe f- yeah for this playthrough at least or at least for now um just because i don't have a good way to to heat this up it needs to be 35c um and if i heat up this whole area that means well it might not be such a bad thing to heat up the whole area what's our temperature down here this is coming out at 30 degrees right so this will help warm up but um yeah i'm just not going to worry about slicksters for now um if things change later then we can always you know we can always hope for some slickster eggs from the from the pod but for now i'm gonna dig up some more fossil and stuff uh, we can do that up here let's see yeah we'll just put a ladder up so we can get at this here Yeah, we'll just slowly start digging all this out. And that also gives us a lot more lead, which is really handy. What are those? Jumping Joyous. Is that different than the ones that I have planted up here? Oh no, it's the same. Okay. Alright, so we'll get some fossil and other good stuff. Yeah, see so we can dig this out too. Wanna get all that all that fossily goodness. Okay. So, now that we got this going, um, there's a couple things we could work on. Number one, um, we could tap into this natural gas geyser in order to use it for power. Uh, it's currently over-pressurized, so it's probably not going to give anything more. It's at 5K pressure. Um, and now that we have steel, I could make the ventilation pump out of steel. To survive 150 C that might not be necessary to be honest we could probably maybe just do it with gold amalgam to begin with um, and it's been analyzed and I ran these numbers through the uh, geyser calculator this is going to give me an average of 109 grams per second perpetually okay so that means even through the dormancy period it averages out to 90, or I'm sorry, to 109 per second. Now, a, a single natural gas generator will use 90 a second. So this is, this is enough to run one natural gas generator and then some. Um, or we could put two. Uh, the thing is, in order to run it, in order to use that, you know, in order to use that average number, that means that I would have to store a lot of natural gas during the active period to use during the dormant period. Um, and I think I calculated that I would need like 61 gas reservoirs to store all that natural gas, or I would need 6,298 tiles. Um, so that's not going to work. <laughs> So I think instead what I'll do is I'll I'll put on enough generators to to use up all the natural gas that it makes during the active cycle and we'll just let the generators go idle during the the idle periods. Okay, so the active cycle or the eruption cycles are going to give us 169 per second on average um which would be two generators. So if we put two generators on, um, they'll run almost all the time during its active period, and then during the dormant period, they'll eventually stop. Um, so why don't we set that up, and then we can use that to power the main part of the base so we can stop relying so much on these coal generators. 
Um, and then we'll need a CO2 skimmer. Or will we? I've got a CO2 skimmer right over here. Uh, hmm. Where could I put them? Because it's going to make a lot of polluted water that I also need to get rid of. Uh, let me see here. I already have, man, I already have so much polluted water. Uh, and I will for a long time to come. I think probably what I'll have to do is make is make that polluted water my primary source for the for the electrolyzers. Now what's going on here? Overloading. How is that overloading? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, plus the sieve. I think it's the sieve. I think the addition of the sieve is what's doing it. Eight times 240 is 1920. Yeah, I think I need to have, the sieve should be on this power line, not this one. Let me fix that. I don't want to have to break in there to repair anything. That would be a drag. Okay, that should take care of it. Right, so now potential load 1920, potential load 1080. Yeah, it's because I've got multiple pumps off of this. Um, actually, this pump should not be running on that. So uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. I have a lot of little things like that I need to clean up. But let's do this first. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is add some cooling to the steam vent to help condense the steam into water because I have a lot of steam in there that's not turning to water and uh, steam by itself is not terribly helpful to me. Um, we want that condensing into water quickly and um, we'll need to do that with some cooling but I'll do the natural gas first. So I just need to figure out where we put the generators so that we can dispose of the polluted water Maybe I just add them to all of this polluted water here. And then also how we're gonna distribute the power. Now, two of those generators will give me, sixteen hundred watts. So, yeah, so I'm gonna to need to, I'm gonna to need to use conductive wire for that. Um, so we're going to have to start, I think we're going to have to start splitting up the power grid inside the base here so that we can, you know, properly use some transformers and things. There's a huge potential load on here. Um, all right, yeah, so this transformer is for the tepidizer, which I'm really not using too much anymore, and that's powering that. And then this transformer is powering the rest of the base. So I think what I want to do is bring the wire down and feed, feed into these transformers with conductive wire. And then we can probably just leave them split up the way that we are now. Although this, this big power network should really be segmented more. So we can we can do that at the same time. All right, so let's, um, let's put in some wire bridges. All 
Right, so I'll put in some wire bridges there, and that way I can bring that wire down uh, here on this column of tiles. And then we'll put the generators up here so that the water can go down. This looks rather thin, but... Um, we could use all this area as a storage tank. I don't really trust this. Let's build some let's build some proper water storage. Alright, so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use granite tiles. Okay, we'll start with it right there. And like that. We'll have to build a ladder down through here. Oh, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> oh, you silly. Okay, well, she should be able to get out down here. Okay, good. Just build it up from here. And then I'll let this water fall in. I have a lot of skill points. Okay, looks like we got some more lime, finally. Alright, new printables. What have we got? I guess I'll take the water. stuck okay well at least now they can get themselves out and then as soon as I drain this I can build across and build out the rest of it and then we'll put our generators up here on top and I'm using granite for the uh, f for the pressure resistance because sandstone wouldn't be able to deal with the pressure. Oh, nobody wants to dig that up yet. Okay, let's see how we're doing down here. Okay, looks like CO2 is getting down close to the level where we set it. Alright, 
And we got five tons of steel now. Okay, time to break it open. Okay, I've got too many Drekos over here, so we are going to have to call the flock, call the herd. too many reed fibers. I've got seeds I could grow. That's what I can do with some of my polluted water. I can grow thimble weeds. Let's see, these need 22 to 37 degrees. Uh, which I pretty much have down here. This is going to fill up though. And up here at the top, it's a little bit too cold. What's the temperature in here? Oh yeah, that's too cold too. Double check where the water is coming out. Is it on the first tile or the second one? Uh, that's not going to run anytime soon. It's got no power. I'm not sure if it comes through this tile or this one. All right, well, we'll just cover all of our bases. So, two natural gas generators. Let's use copper ore for that. There we go. make 22 grams of CO2 so I should be able to manage that with a single with a single CO2 skimmer that'll take care of 300 okay so let's put that It'd be nice if I could contain it Yeah, so let's do this. Let's make a CO2 pit. And I'll put that there. I'll put the, the sieve right next to it. Input. 
and I'll just use an automation sensor. I won't bother with the gas element sensor because I don't think we're going to need it. Oh, you know what I do need, though? I do need a way to get out of there. Uh, Should have left room for a ladder. It's kind of funny that it won't reveal that unless you come through the proper door. <laughs> Even though I deconstructed the walls already. Let's see what happens. Can I move in there? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, that is a little bit silly. Okay. So now I can build that. Let's do that. And do I want to close it in? No, I'll just I'll just leave it open at the top. Okay, so then we'll take our CO2 out of there. Just like that. And I'll send it down right there. Um, I'll give it a high pressure vent just in case. Okay, and then on the input side, we'll need a gas bridge there. Let's see. Do I need to split the output between the two generators? I don't think so. I think I can just do that. Whatever that one doesn't use, the other one will. Um, I should have this connected to a smart battery. which I can put right here, actually. I think having one ladder go down there will be enough. So let's put that in. I'll make that out of lead. And we'll hook up the automation. And then for power, I'm gonna use conductive wire, also made of lead. And we'll feed that into our base, thusly. And we'll also feed it into those devices. We'll tell this to turn on if pressure is greater than a thousand. And then I just need to feed it some water, which we can get from down here. Um, we don't need gold amalgam. Any old pump will do. Okay, and I need to feed this to the input of the sieve. Okay. And I'm going to put a switch on it so I can very carefully control how much how much liquid I send to it. I'll just send a few packets at a time until I'm satisfied that I have a good quantity in there. Let's see if it's got sand. Not yet. I'll give it a fairly high priority so it stays fed. Okay, and then we can put our gas pump in here. So let's make this one out of 
gold amalgam. And if we have problems with it overheating, then I'll, we'll rebuild it out of steel. Okay, and we'll put an Atmos sensor on that. Now let's see. How much does the ventilation pipe carry? Is it a thousand per packet? A thousand per packet. Okay, so I'll let this run if it's if the pressure is above 250. That way we'll get we'll get full packets with the pump, and we won't waste power. Okay, and I think that's about it. Oh, okay, so now I can flick off the switch and I'll run power to that as well. I'll just send it across here so we save wire rather than coming all the way down that way. Okay, and now I need to remove the wire that's underneath these bridges. this into, let's see, do I want to tie it into that transformer? I don't think I do actually because I've got consumers on this line too. And those could overload. Couldn't they? No, I don't think they can. Because it's only 480 watts, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, so I think I think I'm safe connecting this to these two transformers. I could be wrong, but I think it'll be okay. There, and that way the generators will be tied in to the natural gas. Um, I'll reduce the lower limit, the charging point on those smart batteries. And I'll set the charging point for this smart battery to 60 so that we use this power before we use that power. And then once that gets connected, then that'll give power to my pumps and everything so that these things can get going. Um, but I really don't want them to start. Yeah, it won't matter if I, if I don't start the CO2 right away. I think that'll be fine. I need to automate getting eggs out of here and send send extra Dreco eggs over to my evolution chamber. Okay, is this all hooked up? Looks like that's all hooked up. Okay, so I'll set this to 9060. Disabled. Oh, okay. We're gonna set this to above 250. Let's let's just get some water in my carbon skimmer first. That's all I'm going to give it right now. Okay. I'll leave that turned off. Above a thousand. Okay. And then we'll change this to above 250. We'll 
we'll start sending out the natural gas. And the generators will come to life. And we'll just have to keep an eye on these temperatures in here. Okay, that wasn't too hard. And then this will repressurize up to <laughs> up to five kilograms before it stops again. Okay, good. So next on the list is the cooling over here. Um, so to do that, I'm going to need a little aqua tuner. Um, I'm going to put some, I'm going to put some diamond window tiles. I wonder, I think, uh, I can't, I can't disassemble the lockers or I can't deconstruct the lockers. Um, if it's okay with all of you, cause I'd like to build the, the chiller over on this side rather than over here. Um, just because I don't have much space over here. Um, but I would like to get rid of these lockers. So if nobody objects, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a mod <clears throat> that allows me to deconstruct things like this that exist on the map that I don't necessarily want to have around. Right? I'd be able to get rid of those desks if I wanted to. And when we get up to the top of the map, we can get rid of all the gravitas junk that's up there. Um... So I, I'm not really going for achievements on this map, um, aside from the colony achievements. So I think I'm going to do that. Um, if anyone thinks I shouldn't, let me know in the comments. But I let's see. All right. Yeah, it looks like the water's coming out of this tile, which would be like this one and that one. So I could close in the rest of those. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really leave myself any room for uh, for deodorizers up here, but that's fine. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to put in that mod. Um, there's another mod I wanted to use, which is the gas overlay mod. I think I'll try that one out too. I, I'm not going to go mod crazy, but there's a couple that I would like to use. And those are the only two that I can think of right now. So I'll uh, set those up for the next episode. So next time we'll we'll work on um, on setting up our cooling of this uh, cool steam vent so that we can condense all that steam and get more water out of it. Until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.